since I already did my watching the world burn video for uh, August 12th, 2024, I just thought I'd make a quick video about things. Uh, I'm sitting here waiting for the uh, Trump speech, which is going to be kicking off here in about a half an hour. Probably put this video up uh, after that interview, but uh, I did want to just discuss the world situation at this point. Um, Russia, I, we've pushed them too far. Um, I mean, uh, the, the deep state or the, the lunatic uh, Biden administration uh, or the warmongering Democrats, however you want to put it all, uh, Russia's done. There will be no peace. Remember in, uh, um, what was it, Independence Day? No peace. No peace. So anyway, uh, the only thing that Russia is going to accept at this point is the unconditional surrender of uh, Ukraine. Now, where is the deep state going to go with that? I just, I'm um, very curious. Um, are we going to go nuclear? That seems to be the only way that you're going to stop the Russians at this point because they are infuriated. And if you didn't understand uh, what's taking place, is they called the... Uh, the incursion into Kur Kuresk, you know, that crossing of the Br Russian territory, they said that was a terrorist act. It's no longer a special military operation or, you know, uh, whatever the Russians called it, uh, the SMO. Uh, this, 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 is, this is total war. That's where we are at Ukraine. This is what the Democrat Party wants. They want total war everywhere in the world. I put out my video about uh, the fact that we have an imminent war in the Middle East. Uh, I said that it would kick off today. A lot of people are speculating tonight. It could be the 13th. Uh, I kind of put my, my, my stuff on the line because the 12th is a significant religious and, and date to the Arab world. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I, I have a feeling it'll be tonight, but we'll see. Uh, I did want to just uh, tell you, I found this, uh, let's, let's watch this clip. This is a five-minute video from RT, and this is Putin saying there, there will be no more negotiations. Kiev, your history. Odessa, gone. Uh, you know, uh, all of uh, the Donbass, gone. Now, what's NATO going to do about this? You know, you've got huge amounts of, of American laundering money from BlackRock, Blackstone, uh, you name it. All that money's uh, bought up everything in Ukraine. It, it's all going to go up in smoke. Russia is not going to stop. No way, no how at this point. I mean, Ukraine, you're done. You're toast. I mean, <clears throat> I can't believe it. Putin is holding a meeting on the situation in the Kursk border region, which has been resisting Ukrainian attacks for the second week. The Russian leader said that, that Kiev's actions were unlikely to improve its negotiating position. It is no clear why the Kiev regime refused our proposals to return to a peaceful settlement plan, as well as proposals from interested and neutral mediators. It appears that the enemy, with the help of its Western masters, is seeking to improve its future negotiating position. But what kind of negotiations can we talk about with people who indiscriminately attack civilians and public infrastructure or attempt to threaten nuclear power facilities? So our team correspondent Saskia Taylor joins me now in the studio for more details on the meeting. Saskia, good to see you. So Saskia, this, uh, this incursion, these fighting has been going on for more than a week now. Uh, it seems that uh, there doesn't seem to be an end in sight. What, what's the latest uh, on the situation? Well, ever since Ukrainian troops launched their surprise incursion into the Kursk region, the Russian president has been holding regular meetings with the heads of various security agencies, as well as local governors. This Monday, we had another gathering where they discussed uh, the latest developments on the ground there. And look, there is no denying it. The situation is incredibly tense. It is difficult. Fighting is ongoing. And the cold, hard reality of what's playing out was laid out. And really, the numbers speak for themselves. 
28 settlements are currently in this zone. There are about 2,000 residents whose fate is unknown. Drone and missile attacks have increased significantly during this time. 194 drone attacks were conducted in the region. 147 of those projectiles were shot down. There was a strike on the apartment building, 13 people were injured. As of today, 121,000 people have evacuated and 59,000 more are expected to. The work is ongoing. 12 civilians have been killed and 121 wounded, including 10 children. Wow, those numbers are devastating. I mean, really, I'm shocked. So many. But was there anything said about what was motivating Kyiv? Well, we need to look at the wider political context. Vladimir Putin says that Kiev's uh, aim and attempt to destabilize Russia has uh, failed because we have seen that uh, the events in Kursk have actually pushed people to further coalesce, whether that is opening up their own homes to evacuees, whether that is gathering hundreds of tons of humanitarian aid all across this vast nation. He did also note that more and more volunteers are signing up to join the military in the face of this increasing hostility from their neighbour. We're talking one and a half thousand daily. Uh, and although we know that the Russian president has made numerous uh, offers to return to the negotiating table, the first attempt all the way back in the spring of 2022, Kiev itself admitting that, that was torpedoed by the West, we definitely got a sense from the short speech today that the Kremlin feels that any discussion or negotiation with the current Ukrainian leadership would be entirely futile. Just to remind you, of course, Moscow considers Zelensky to be illegitimate ever since his term expired back in May, and he seemingly has no plans to hold new elections. This is, after all, as Putin says, the same leadership which, at the behest of the West, is shelling civilians. It is threatening and targeting nuclear infrastructure, and it is a big accusation coming out of today's meeting, deploying chemical weapons. Yeah. The day before yesterday, it was not possible to restore the power supply in the Belovsky district. A team of utility workers came under fire and the ammunition contained chemical weapons. Everyone managed to take cover. Everyone is alive, but they were poisoned. Well, that would, of course, be a war crime. We have reached out for comment to the OPCW. That is uh, the international body responsible for preventing the illegal uh, use of chemical weapons. Well, the Kremlin's view is that um, the primary goal of, of this attack is to deflect attention from the defeat after defeat, which Ukraine is sustaining on the battlefield in the Donbass and beyond. We know from our own correspondence that the pace at which Russia's armed forces are moving forward along the entire front line has really uh, significantly uh, picked up. But the Russian leader actually putting uh, a number to it. Apparently, uh, troops are advancing one and a half times faster than they had previously. That's, of course, not to say that it's still not a slow grind. And actually, this is a very important uh, point and moment, because despite the initial triumph of the Kursk attack, soon uh, skepticism started swirling about Ukraine's game plan uh, here, because it is widely recognized that it is inevitably going to end in failure. It is just a question of time. So how could Kiev sacrifice such valuable fighting uh, power, which of course is in such short supply for it at the moment, on this some fleeting uh, PR stunt. Yeah, it truly is uh, interesting indeed, but we appreciate that update there, RT's uh, Saskia Taylor. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks again. Anyway, let's just get into a couple of tweets here, or, or ex posts, uh, getting on to some other topics. Uh, you would think something like this would be on the front page of every newspaper. Voting machine company that flipped votes in Pennsylvania admits someone programmed the election. Well, we knew that uh, the Democrats stole the 2020 election. I, I think I can say that now. Maybe not on YouTube, but if you watch my channel on the burn on Rumble. Uh, you know, Vivek makes a great point here, and I, I want the Trump campaign to get away. They were talking about Iran has hacked the Trump campaign. That is such bull crap. Get off of your stupid crap Trump campaign. I'm, I'm still voting for Trump, but I mean, God dang, it seems like somebody up there is breathing stupid shit into Trump's ear. But I'm just going to read you what Vivek said, because it's a very valid point. It damages Trump's campaign to claim that something in AI is clearly isn't. Call me a sellout if you want, but I don't want Trump to lose over this trivial narrative about crowd sizes. 
He's surrounded by bad advisors who are pushing this nonsense, who should be focusing on attacking Kamala's flawed policies and lack of experience, not getting distracted by unproductive arguments. And so that's just another one. So what I was saying was also this whole Iranian hack of the Trump administration. That is bullcrap, man. Now, are they going to hack the United States? If, if we, by, by the way, it looks like everything's lining up for the United States to be in total war over there. Uh, this is ZLATTI71. I follow him, and uh, he's usually got some good stuff. But let's read what he says here. There is nothing to talk about with Kiev, which attacks civilians and nuclear power facilities. Putin. <laughs> That's a quote from Putin, and you, you watch the video. The president noted that the situation in Kursk region shows why Kiev regime rejected the peace proposals of Moscow and mediators. Now, understand, the Russians have come forward with so many peace proposals. So many. It's over, man. It's over for Ukraine. Sorry to say it. It's a, it, it we're going to go to nuclear war? Well, we'll probably see nuclear war in the Middle East. That's why I call it watching the world burn, right? All right, so the president also named obvious goals of the Ukrainian armed force militants to sow discord and discord in Russian society to strike a blow to the political situation in the Russian Federation. Yeah, well, we, we, you got that video. This is Adam. I tell you, it's a new new uh, person that I've been following, and he's got some really good posts up here. Uh, it's called Adam Adam E Media, and uh, I, I I encourage you to follow him on X. I think he's a good guy. Uh, the real reasons why Gaddafi was killed. Libya had no electricity bills. Electricity came free of charge to all citizens. There were no interest rates on loans, and banks were state-owned. The loan of citizens, by law, 0%. Gaddafi promised not to buy a house for his parents until everyone in Libya owns a home. All newlywed couples in Libya received 60000 dinars from the government and because they bought their own apartments and started their families education and medical treatment in libya were free before gaddafi there were 25 readers and 80 cents and it just goes on from there and i don't know if these things are true about libya but i know that it was a much better place to live before hillary clinton and the warmongering democrats the warmongering democrats destroyed it God almighty, I can't believe, why would anybody vote Democrat? Open borders, fentanyl, killing hundreds of thousands of Americans, uh, child trafficking, uh, human trafficking. I mean, what the hell is wrong with people, man? Anyway, uh, this, this just gets into Secretary of Defense. I called Israeli Minister of Defense Gallant on Sunday to reiterate our commitment to take every possible step to defend Israel and noted the strengthening of U.S. military force posture and capabilities throughout the Middle East. Was there a congressional vote for us to go to war? I don't, I don't recall seeing it. Did you see it? I don't know. I, I didn't see it. Uh, I have ordered the USS ABM Lincoln Strike Group equipped with F-35C fighters to accelerate its transit to Central Command Area of Responsibility adding to the capabilities already provided by the USS Theodore Roosevelt Carrier Strike Group. I also ordered the USS Georgia SSGN-729 guided missile submarine to Central Command Region. Now, in yesterday's or my earlier video, I think this thing's equipped with like 170 cruise missiles. I mean, this must be a big damn submarine that they're, they're moving in there. I. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll include this in the video. A closer look at the fire at the Zaporizhia nu nuclear plant after a cooling tower was struck by a Ukraine drone yesterday. Yes, Ukraine is absolutely insane. That's DD geopolitics. I agree. Oh, uh, well, Ukraine, it, they may be insane, but they're about to be extinct. And we may all be extinct. I'm just saying. I can't believe people are just sitting idly by watching all this shit happen. Does that make sense to you? This dog has more common sense than a Democrat. I will tell you that. I couldn't even get him to pee just now. But I'm going to tell you what. I would trust this dog over a Democrat any freaking day. Uh, and this, I hope this is true. I mean, DD Geopolitics breaking. U.S. to leave Iraq finally. Tanzim News Agency. The Iraq foreign minister and his American counterpart will hold a press conference in Washington next month 
Well, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Next month is too late. If Iran launches what I think they're going to launch, and we get a regional war in the Middle East, everybody on these Iraq bases are dead. We can't get them out in a month. We need them out now. Everybody in Syria, the U.S. forces, now understand, blame your U.S. government. Don't blame Iran or the, the, the Arabs in the Middle East. We shouldn't have bases in Iraq and Syria. In Syria, we're just stealing their oil. How would you feel if a base was just down the street, a Chinese base, and it was pumping oil out of the ground and giving it back to China? I don't know. Democrats, that's who they are. Next month, the withdrawal of the international coalition forces from all parts of Iraq except the KRI will begin September 2025. Oh, so the fuck what? They're going to be dead before then. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to repost this. This is Dinesh D'Souza, and it's hard to parody Kamala, who is walking around parody herself, but this woman brings it off in style. Watch. Now, I would imagine she copyrighted this parody, and you can follow me on X at, at that cybersec guy, at that cybersec guy, and I'm going to repost this because I just thought it's just, I mean, it's freaking hilarious. Oh, my God. And then Kamala's going to bring us out of the recession when she's been part of the problem all along. <laughs> the media is going overtime trying to push Kamala. Oh, my God. Wagner-affiliated channels reported massive column of Magner flags moving toward the Kursk front. Yep. And uh, by the way, looks like that's all going down. This just in. Well, and of course, we're getting on from there. All right. That's it for the video. Peace out. Stay free.